The question is, can we make it so that this data is all not all in one place? And that's where I believe the blockchain is crucial. And that's where I think you can understand where I'm going to go with this with medicine. The crucial point about this is in, in a blockchain, decentralized blockchain, everybody holds their own keys, literally. Yes, it's a level of responsibility. In Bitcoin, if you lose your keys, private key, your money is gone. You can't like email and can you reset my password? Doesn't work that way. But there are ways around that. We can fix that up. That is not the biggest problem. The biggest advantage is that you can have your own private keys. Not only that, your private keys don't have to be tied to your identity. Bitcoin, some people think, by the way, Bitcoin is anonymous. It's not true. The fact is that Bitcoin uh, is not anonymous, but it is pseudonymous. Pseudonymous means that you can create a key and then the key, every action of that key is actually can be connected. But what about the keys? Let me tell you about the Bitcoin keys, the fascinating fact. So it uses, remember the numbers theory that we started with, we kind of come full circle. Numbers theory deals with very, very large numbers. The numbers that are not found anywhere in this universe. Universe is huge, but these numbers are much, much larger. Some of these numbers take a whole page to write down. That's a, those are some big numbers. In Bitcoin, you can create a private key. You don't need the central authority to create a Bitcoin account. You don't need to email. There's no Bitcoin central authority, by the way. You can create your own key. A Bitcoin key is really just a set of numbers. It's just a set of random numbers. In reality, you can actually sit down and just keep flipping a coin and writing down the results. Zeros, you know, zero, one, zero, one, head tails. And you can convert it into a Bitcoin key. It will be perfectly valid Bitcoin key. You are your own authority. The question that might be asked then, oh, wait, Daniel, if you're randomly writing down your own Bitcoin key, what is the chance that we have the same keys? And then all of a sudden, you know, I can take your money or you can take mine. Yes, strictly speaking, there is a chance, right? Because there's no central authority. Like a Facebook, they will control that no two people with the same email will log into Facebook. It's just, you know, have two different accounts. It's not possible. The numbers theory deals with such large numbers that it's, for all practical purposes, impossible to come up with two random numbers that are the same. Let me give you an example. Imagine our Earth, planet Earth, and we take every grain of sand on the planet Earth, and that each grain of sand turns into its own planet Earth. And on that, each of those planets, there's also grains of sand in the same number, so if we count those second order grains of sand, and there are a lot of them, there are the number of Bitcoin keys is larger by orders of magnitude. Okay. Can you can you fathom the number, the number of numbers we're talking about? That's that's unbelievable. It's hard, it's impossible to imagine. Our, our minds, I don't think, can comprehend such numbers. But the fact is the we're going back to the numbers theory. Remember, something that humans did for centuries for fun all of a sudden has this amazing, amazing application. And that's not the first time. Uh, I'll give you another example for math. Remember, there is geometry, right? You study geometry. Parallel lines do not cross, strictly speaking. There's like a definition of a parallel line. It's, it's an axiom. But you know what? For centuries, humans struggled with that. And they asked the question, why wouldn't parallel lines cross? And in fact, a whole number of mathematicians throughout history went mad, like literally in a madhouse because of that question. That's how passionate those people were about math. Eventually, there were two mathematicians, Lobachevsky, the Russian mathematician, and a, and a Hungarian mathematician, almost at the same time came up with what's called non-Euclidean geometry. In fact, they created a whole new geometry where parallel lines cross. What use is that? If parallel lines can cross, what could you do with that? Yes, and, and a lot of people said, you're crazy. There was no use for that. It was pure play. All of a sudden, in the 20th century, you find out that when you model things in space, it's all, you almost always have to use non-Euclidean geometry. It actually has very important application for, for you know, spaceships and so on. Not only that, in genomics, when you look at the way genomes, a lot of the, a lot of the structures there are best described with non-Euclidean geometry. People played for centuries, all of a sudden it has a real application that's very important. Same thing with numbers theory.